This is part three in our four part series on thinking abstractly. In this video, we discuss the difference between abstraction and reality. So it's very important that we understand the difference between abstraction and reality. Here's a satellite image of London. This is exactly what the city looks like from above as viewed by the naked eye. Nothing added, nothing removed. No details have been deliberately highlighted over others. It is a realistic image of London. However, it would be pointless to give it to a tourist and have them use it to travel from Kensington to London Bridge on the Tube. Now this map has been produced by applying a great deal of abstraction. Roads have been highlighted, key areas labelled, parks highlighted. It's not as realistic as the satellite image, but it's far more useful. Having said that, tourists would probably still had trouble using it to plan our tube journey. This third map, overlaid over part of the last map we looked at, has been abstracted even further. The only above ground feature still visible is the River Thames. Now this map follows the geography of London. Each of the tube stations and lines are clearly shown. We are now very far removed from reality, but this version of the map is finally starting to meet its intended purpose, to help tourists travel via London's tube network. So could we make it even better by applying even more abstraction? Well, let's just take a step back and think back to our sat-nav example from the previous video. A sat-nav interface would display a realistic map with a sensible scale of distances between locations in proportion to each other. However, this is not how the data needs to be stored internally in order for us to manipulate it programmatically. We need to know which towns or nodes connect to which others and the distances between them. We further abstracted the map down to only the relationships and the data that the program therefore requires. This is the information we need to write an algorithm that calculates travel routes. We've abstracted everything else away. You probably recognize this as a graph data structure. The actual London tube map uses the concept of distorted geography in a similar way. It's even more abstracted than the previous version we looked at. Details have been simplified further to make it even easier to read and follow. It no longer maps against the precise geography of London. Again, this version is very far removed from the reality of the overlying landscape as shown from the original satellite image. However, it is by far the most useful in terms of helping our tourists travel via the London Underground. Having watched the video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What do we mean when we talk about the differences between abstraction and reality? To help get your head around everything to do with computational thinking, we have a freely available downloadable cheat sheet. It's got two sides to it. There's a basic poster that reminds you at a top level what the five different strands are. And on the back, there's a much more detailed explanation. This resource is completely free from student.craigandave.org. Just scroll down and select the section that says A-level revision. You'll then see a section called OCR, AS and A-level, and there's a number of cheat sheets in there, including two versions of the computation one. Just click download to get the zip file.